Good afternoon, I'm Tim Montague. Welcome to the webinar, Five Ways Solar Reduces Operating Costs. This is our monthly webinar series at Continental Electrical here in the Chicago suburbs, where we talk about all things solar power and solar energy. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the basics of how solar reduces your operating costs especially for commercial industrial facilities. Of course, it also works for residential customers. We at Continental only do commercial solar, so that's the focus of all of our webinars here. Before I dive into the nuts and bolts, I just wanna make a note about the sun and the fact that we get all of our energy from the sun. Not only do we, does it grow all of our crops and foodstuffs, but even the, the, you know, the existing energy sources, fossil fuels, oil, coal, natural gas, all of those originally come from sun, which was turned into plants and animals, which then turned into fossil fuels. So there's not really a critical comparison or just juxtaposition to make between the current day solar PV or photovoltaics and other sources of energy. Solar PV is just a new technology that we're now leveraging because of the price of technology has come down 75% since 2010. And now we have great incentives at the federal and state level, which I'm gonna talk about, that make solar payback very quickly They, there is also a gigantic solar capacity here in the United States. So in the bottom right of this slide, you will see this is our current consumption in gigawatt hours. So that's how much electricity we use, 3.7 million gigawatt hours per year. And then the actual solar capacity for PV generation is, is way, way beyond that. There's so much sunlight hitting the earth that we could produce all of our uh, all of our power from for a whole year from just one hour's worth of sunlight. So, uh, if anybody tries to tell you that we don't get enough sunlight in the U.S. or here in the Upper Midwest, you can just point them to uh, to this graph or many other graphs like it. So today we're talking about how solar pays back. What is solar PV and why now? We're gonna talk about some recent projects that we've done here at Continental. We're gonna talk about ROI. That's the primary reason that companies are investing in solar energy. You see many Fortune 500 companies like Ikea and Walmart and Target and Microsoft and Apple Computer. Many large corporations are investing in solar PV now. And that's because of these basic reasons here. It produces energy savings. There are cash incentives, there are tax credits. We have something called accelerated depreciation, which is for depreciating equipment. So that's, that's why companies are investing in solar now. And of course there is the ever present, uh, solar is a green and renewable energy. As some people like to say, there's a gigantic fusion reactor in the sky called the sun, which is feeding us free power, which solar technology allows us to leverage. And then who can benefit from solar? Not everybody, but the vast majority of companies that are owner occupied. So if you own your facility, you can put a solar array on your rooftop if you have a sunny rooftop. And, um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what are some of the other criteria for benefiting from solar. And then I'll do some Q and A with our participants today. And you can, uh, put your questions into the chat bar, and uh, I will get to those a little further on. So what is solar and why now? Here's a schematic, a very simplified schematic showing that solar is black panels or modules as we call them in the industry that you put on your roof or on your ground. They take sunlight and convert the photons from the sunlight into electrons. The electrons come off of the solar array, this little arrow here, they're coming off in direct current or DC power. 
They then go to a little box, which is about the size of a computer for uh, a small or residential system. And this is an inverter. It converts DC electric into usable AC electricity. That then plugs into your electrical panel, which is connected to the grid. So this is a grid tied system, which is the vast majority of solar systems in the United, in the United States. And then into the home. So the solar electrons are then just powering your lights, your refrigerator, your TVs, etc. So that's solar in a nutshell. It's just a way to convert sunlight to electricity. Solar was invented in about 1954 um, in its modern form at Bell Labs in New Jersey. So it's now well over 50 years old. It's mature technology, as I said, that converts sunlight to energy, goes from rooftop DC to AC to your building load and to the grid. The end of the day, solar reduces kilowatt hour consumption. It's gonna reduce your power bill. If you have a big power bill, this is tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And solar can literally save you tens, hundreds, or even millions of dollars over the lifespan of a solar array. It comes in different forms. Roof mount is the most common. Uh, we have a roof mount array here at Continental in Oak Brook. It comes in ground mount, which is uh, what you would call a solar farm at a bigger scale. And then something special called building integrated, like a solar awning or a carport. But, so there are different forms that solar takes. And this is a very fast growing industry. It's one of the fastest growing creators of jobs in the United States. There are over a quarter million people working in solar in the US now. So it's a good industry for uh, jobs. If you're looking for an industry to get into, solar is a great industry to get into. And if you're looking to benefit from green power, solar is a great source of that. Of course, there's also wind and other renewable sources like hydro, but solar is starting to go head to head with all sources of energy, conventional and other renewables now. So let's talk quickly about some recent solar projects so that you have a sense of what solar looks like, who's benefiting, and what, you know, what, what is the form that these projects take. So we're gonna talk just briefly about four projects, Clark Environmental in St. Charles, North Central College in Naperville, Grays Lake High School, North and South, uh, those two high schools in Lake County, and then Apt Electronics in Glenview. Here's a map showing some of the solar projects that we've done in the last five years. We've installed about 16 megawatts of solar photovoltaics in Chicagoland, and we now work statewide and in neighboring states as well. But of course, Chicagoland is the bulk of our installations. So here's a, a skies view or a drones view of Clark Environmental in St. Charles here in the western suburbs of Chicago. They installed a rooftop array. That's a ballasted rooftop array. They also installed a carport and they did a solar awning here, which is attached to the building, which is a form of building integrated solar. So they have uh, a variety of types of solar. They're very into sustainability and they really wanted to show off the fact that they're benefiting from renewable energy. And these are uh, the carports and the awning are a great way to do that because obviously, and here's from Google, what the solar array looks like on the roof. You can't see the rooftop array necessarily from the ground, right? Most, most rooftop arrays are out of your line of sight. So if you wanna show people that you have solar, there are other ways to do that. Here's, a, uh, here's the Res Rec Center, one of the largest buildings on campus at uh, North Central College in Naperville. They did a solar plus storage project. You obviously see the 563 KW array here, nice big rooftop array. And then in the container here at the bottom of the slide, and then there's a cutout showing a close up of this, is a, uh, it's like a shipping container, um, which is air conditioned. And there's a battery inside there, lithium ion battery that is providing grid services. The main service that batteries provide in Illinois are um, a grid service called frequency regulation, and you get paid for providing that grid service. 
You also can use the battery for backup power and for reducing capacity charges. So there's a variety of services that batteries provide and as lithium ion technology comes down in price, just like solar has, uh, more and more companies are investing in solar plus storage. And of course, solar uh, only produces power during the day. You can store some of that additional power with a battery and that's another application of batteries. Here's a ground mount, small solar farm. This is a 1.4 megawatt or 1400 kW ground mount. And then you see two rooftop arrays here at North and South High Schools in Grays Lake up here in Northern uh, Lake County, north of Chicago. So as you can see, you're just uh, building a, a fixed racking system that uh, consists of vertical pylons that are driven into the ground. So it's just steel driven into the ground. There's no footing, there's no concrete, and um, it doesn't hurt the land at all. It's just uh, steel in the ground. And then the, the glass uh, and silicon panels are sitting there collecting sunlight, converting that to electricity that's then feeding into power these schools. This was a performance contract with an ESCO and Energy Services Corporation. So many schools uh, don't necessarily have the cash to buy a solar array and they will use uh, a third party provider who will own and operate and then, um, or, or do some special financing arrangement. So there's little money out of pocket. And here's the apt electronics store. This is one of our, um, Flagship projects, I would say, it's a 516 kW solar array on their 100,000 square foot <clears throat> warehouse. This was a, a new, new construction project, and then they wanted to pair that with a Tesla battery. It's a 500 kW Tesla power pack battery. Tesla's in the news a lot. They're a, a, a rabid marketing machine. Um, for their Gigafactory out west that is making batteries and, um, and they're big proponents of solar plus storage as well. But we, we really like the Tesla power pack, but there's uh, over a dozen mainstream manufacturers of commercial lithium ion batteries now. Many electronics companies that are household names also make batteries, Panasonic, LG. So, uh, and the same goes for solar modules. If you make electronics, you probably make solar modules. So that's a quick overview of some of the projects we've done here at Continental. There are many more. We've done over 50 solar projects. And because of um, some of the incentives that I'm going to talk about today, solar is a very rapidly growing industry here in Illinois. We are going to add 3,000 megawatts of solar, including residential, commercial, utility scale over the next decade. That's a 30-fold increase over the amount of solar that we have installed today. So a very huge uh, increase in solar coming to Illinois. So how does solar ROI? It boils down to a couple of different things, energy, incentives and rebates, and then uh, tax credits and depreciation. You see here, and, the, and these are just kind of back of the envelope, but these are, this is how a solar project pencils out here in Illinois now. You can anticipate that the energy savings in the first five years are gonna be about 20% of the value of the project. That depends on the price that you pay for power and everybody pays a different price. We're a deregulated state here in Illinois. So you might pay four cents or you might pay seven cents huge variation. Then there's cash incentives. These are SREX and the Smart Inverter Incentive, which I'll be talking a little more about here in the presentation. But those are solar renewable energy credits and the Smart Inverter Incentive. So those are a cash subsidy that come from the utility, from ComEd or Ameren, and uh, they go to the system owner, they're paid out over the first five years, and they accumulate to 40%, sometimes even more, of a project's value. So that's a very generous incentive. We now see payback periods in the three to six year range because of these Illinois 
uh, cash incentives. There's currently a very general federal subsidy for solar that's called the investment tax credit. <clears throat> uh, to simplify it, we just call it tax credits, and that is 30% of the value of a project. So if your company has a tax liability, you wanna look into solar. This is a great way to not pay money to Uncle Sam and put a power plant on your facility instead that is gonna produce free power for 25 years. That's the anticipated life of the equipment. And then there's accelerated bonus depreciation. When you buy equipment as a company, you can depreciate the value of that equipment, right? And there's accelerated depreciation for solar. So that is worth about 20 to 25%. So you see here, you're already 15% in the black by year five. That's a real eye opener here in Illinois, and this is why solar is gonna be growing rapidly now for the next decade. Energy savings, I just wanted to show you how this works. So there's a bar graph here in the bottom right. The blue bar is the consumption of this facility. This is a mall. And the green line is the production that would come off of a fairly large project, right? This is a two and a half megawatt or 2.45 megawatt solar array, it's gonna produce almost a quarter million dollars worth of energy per year. Now, of course, it's producing more energy in the summer than in the winter, right? In January and December, it's not producing, but over the course of the year, it's a real money saver. And this project has an IRR of 15%, payback period of four years. Let's talk about cash incentives, the SREX and Smart Inverter Incentive that I mentioned. This is all because of something called the Future Energy Jobs Act that went into force in 2017. We foreshortened that as FEJA. So if you hear people talking about FEJA, that's what they're talking about. This is a bill to help us achieve our renewable portfolio standard of 25% green power by 2025. The way it pencils out is it is $200 million in cash incentives flowing into the economy to system owners per year. So $200 million per year, but that's about 40% of a project's value if you're installing a rooftop array or a ground mount array on your facility. It's funded by you and me. All the ratepayers in Illinois now in Ameren and ComEd territory are paying into this fund. It's not a tax, it's just a small fee. And if you go on your power bill, you can see there's an RPS or Renewable Portfolio Standard fee. It's a very small amount per KWH. The way this plays out is two forms. It's called SREX, Solar Renewable Energy Credits. This is a performance-based incentive. So when the array is turned on, starts producing power, for every megawatt hour of electricity that it produces, you get one REC. And then at the end of a quarter, you'll get a check from the utility for all the recs that your array produced. Then there's also a smart inverter incentive. This is an incentive to install uh, state-of-the-art technology. These inverters are um, have nice features like rapid shutdown and um, they can be remotely controlled. So the, the utilities like to have this technology in the infrastructure and they're incentivizing that with a $250 per KW. So if you're installing a, a 10 KW uh, system, you're getting $2,500. And then it just that check just gets bigger and bigger as the system size goes up. It's about 10%, uh, five to 10% of a system's value. So all said, 40% is coming back to you in cash in the first five years, which is very generous. So here's a sample cash flow for the first five years of a small commercial PV system. Here I've modeled a 55 kW system, might cost $2.50 a watt, so your capital expense is $137,500. Yes, solar is real money, it's not cheap, but because of the savings from energy and incentives, it's paying for itself. So you see here, energy bill savings are estimated at $27,500. That's in the first five years. The cash incentives, the SREX and Smart Inverter Incentive is $55,000. 40% of the project. 
And then we have tax credits, that's the federal ITC, that's 41,250. And then accelerated bonus depreciation at 34,000. So the five year net savings is $20,625 $20, already in the black in year five. And then the 20 year, 25 year savings are $122,500. So you're investing $137,000. You're getting all that back in the first five years from the energy savings and the incentives. And then for the rest, it's just gravy. And you're saving $122,500 that you wouldn't have if you had not installed a solar system. Now let's look at a com large commercial system. This is a 2.45 megawatt DC. That's the largest behind the meter solar array you can install in Illinois. And although I work with many factories that can install, could consume many more megawatts, up to 10, 20 megawatts of solar, they're limited to installing uh, a 2.45 megawatt DC or two megawatt AC solar array. What that looks like is it's about $4.2 million to install that. The energy bill savings you're gonna see in the first five years are $918,000, huge savings. The cash incentives, $2 million. The tax credits, $1.2 million. And the accelerated bonus depreciation, almost a million dollars. So in year five, you're already cash positive to almost the tune of a million dollars. And then over 25 years, you're saving $4.8 million. That's $4.8 million that you can use for R&D for hiring, for training, for buying a new facility, for buying other equipment. It's real money going into your bank account. So who can benefit from solar? If you have a sunny roof, you should definitely look at solar. But there's a few more criteria. Um, it's especially good for owner-occupied facilities. It's not that it do doesn't work for tenant occupied facilities, give me a call. I'm happy to talk to you about your tenant occupied facility. But for, for the most part, this is a permanent upgrade you're making to the facility. So it's, it behooves the owner and the occupant. And so when those are combined, it's, it's a win-win. Bigger the bill, bigger the benefit. Bigger facilities with bigger power bills are gonna see more benefits. But small facilities, low rise office, schools, um, everybody with a sunny roof can benefit. So we have a 55 kW solar array here at Continental and it produces about a third of our power. That's real savings. New construction is great, right? Especially if it's designed from the get-go to be solar friendly where you have fewer roof obstructions. But any, any big facility, warehouse, factory, low rise office and schools, these are all great. The thing that does not work generally is high rise office, for example, because the area of the roof relative to the load of the building, right? The, the rooftop area to the area of the, to the volume of the building is, is very small. So solar doesn't work great for high rise. You could invest in a solar farm, do a PPA agreement though. There's ways to green your power infrastructure no matter what. There are also some other opportunities that I wanted to mention. Here in Illinois, we now have community solar. This is a centrally owned, third, uh, where a third party owns a central array, say a megawatt or 250 kW solar array, and then they sell that power to subscribers in the community. It can be as few as three off takers, or subscribers as they're called, or it can be as many as several hundred residents, right? So anyone can buy into a community solar project once these projects get built. These projects are going to get built in 2019 through 2025 or so. And so they're all being lined up right now. You've, uh, if you own farm ground in Illinois, you might have been approached by solar developers who want to lease your land. Big rooftops are also good for solar, right? So if you have a big warehouse, you could lease your rooftop to a solar developer and I will connect you to that solar developer gladly. There are about 40 or so developers that are now operating in Illinois. They're moving here from other states where the industry is more mature. And of course, we have a few homegrown uh, solar developers here. We are an, an installer, so we partner with developers. 
Um, and for commercial industrial projects, we can do the project soup to, nut, soup to nuts. Large rooftops, brownfields, farm ground, as I mentioned, those are all good things for community solar. It produces passive income for the facility or the landowner. And then it benefits the subscribers who can say, okay, I wanna to subscribe to solar power, but I don't have a sunny roof or I don't wanna own a solar array. I'll buy into a solar, a community solar project, and then I'm buying green power. And that's just being accounted for via virtual net metering. So the array has a meter that talks to a computer, and then your house has a, a meter that talks to the computer, and that power offsets your power bill. So you're buying fewer electrons from the grid and more from the community solar array as whatever you're subscribing to. You can subscribe you know, 5KW or 25KW. <clears throat> this is great for renters, low-income residents, and anyone who wants solar but doesn't own a facility or can't install solar on their facility. The other big opportunity right now is solar plus storage. When you install lithium ion batteries in combination with a solar array, you can use the tax credits that are available for solar, the ITC. So storage, um, battery storage allows to one, store energy, excess energy from the solar array. It gives you a source of backup power whenever there's a grid outage, brownout or blackout, right? keeps the lights on, keeps the factory running, and then it provides grid services, especially a service called frequency regulation. The frequency of the grid is 60 Hertz here in North America, and it gets slightly out of whack over time. And so batteries are a great service to bring it back to 60 Hertz, and they will pay you for that service. And then, as I mentioned, the investment tax credit. So when you pair solar with storage in a certain ratio, you can take that tax credit on that uh, total capital expenditure. Very generous subsidy. As always, I want to give a shout out to my colleagues here at Continental. Brian Haug is the director of our Energy Solutions Group. Cesar Romo and Jeff Bell are our project managers. And there's me. I stand on the shoulders of the staff here at Continental and many other team members that are named here every day. So I want to thank you all for your hard work and um, for being such a great place to work. Continental is a wonderful company. We're a very family friendly company. We're a fourth generation family owned business owned and operated by the Wits brothers. So we have a couple of upcoming events I wanted to call out before taking some Q&A from our listeners. On August 2nd, we are going to have the Chicago Solar and Storage Meetup here at Continental in Oak Brook. This is our first Thursday of the month. We do this every first Thursday of the month at Continental. And we have different topics that we go over. Sometimes it's community solar oriented. Sometimes it's commercial industrial. If the weather is nice, we offer free tours of our rooftop array. We have a, um, a lift in the building to take us to the roof. So it's easy to get up there. And you can see for yourself what a commercial solar array looks like sounds like, and uh, it's, it's fun. Then on August 28th is our regular monthly SolarWorks for Illinois webinar. This, uh, this webinar will be focused especially on commercial and industrial solar, why your business should consider solar energy, how rooftops solar pays dividends, and should you consider solar plus battery storage. So we'll talk a little bit about the economics of solar plus storage. Thank you. With that, I will open it up to Q&A. Um, you can chat a question in to the, uh, to the box, or you can uh, raise your hand, and I, will, uh, I can unmute you if you want. But um, happy to take questions. And my email and phone number there as well. So... You can reach me anytime at tmontague at cecco, C -E -C -C -O com, or 217-722-0429. That's my mobile number. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, whether you're watching this live or viewing the recording, please reach out to me if you want more information about commercial or industrial solar or other types of solar like community solar. 
I uh, know a lot of people in the solar industry now in the Midwest and get, can get you to the right people. All right, well, if we don't have any questions, I think we will let it go at that. Thank you so much for attending SolarWorks for Illinois, the five ways that solar pays back. And again, I'm Tim Montague with Continental Electrical. Have a great day.